What is up guys? On tonight's installment of Project RX-8, Project Great Daily, we're gonna be modifying the factory oil metering setup so we will no longer be pulling oil from the, the engine's oil pan and we're gonna be pulling oil from an external reservoir which is gonna be filled with a proper two-stroke premix uh, which is much more ideal for, for longevity, reliability, and it's certainly under high stress situations, high RPM uh, situations with the engine. Now, some of you may be wondering, why would we want a premix? Well, by design, and a common, a common thing that I hear a lot is when, when people talk about rotary engines, they're like, oh, rotary engines? Yeah, you, you burn a lot of oil. Yes, they burn oil, but it's, it's by design from the factory. It's not like they're burning oil uh, because of blow-by, like in a piston motor where like the piston rings start losing compression, they're getting blow-by from the crankcase. Um, from the factory, oil is taken from your, your factory oil pan and injected into the combustion area, and that's to lubricate your apex seals and your, and your, and your corner seals. Um, there's also, they're also a little bit of a cooling benefit there as well. But when you're pulling oil from your factory oil pan, which is hot, oil that is not meant to be injected into a combustion area, um, one, you're not getting the cooling benefits, two, you're creating, you're, you're creating more potential for carbon buildup, uh, more potential to clog up your, your factory catalytic converter if you're still running it. I don't think that rotaries were meant to have catalytic converters, they're not really designed that well to work with them, but that's, that's here nor there. Um, so what, 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 the, what this kit does is, um, it allows us to bypass that, so you don't have to really worry about losing engine oil anymore once, once this is installed. Plus the benefit of this is, is that you can actually now run a synthetic engine oil um, in the motor because the reason why it's not recommended is because synthetic oil is definitely not meant to be in the combustion area and it doesn't, it doesn't burn well. So uh, that's, that's why it's recommended to just run regular fossil oil. Um, I premix on all my on all my rotary stuff. Uh, my my FD is uh, I, I just premix. I dump it in at the at the fuel filler when I when I go and I pump my gas. But oil metering oil metering is completely removed from that engine because the RX8 is my daily, and I want the convenience factor. I think that this solution um, might be a little bit more ideal and just a little bit easier to manage. So um, the kit is is from Epitroch. I picked it up on eBay. It uses what's called the Sone. I might be butchering this poor guy's name. It's S O H N. It's his oil metering adapter, uh, which kind of just sandwiches in between the factory oil metering pump and then you run a hose to an external reservoir. So let's, uh, let's dive into this installation, shall we? All right guys, so we'll take a look at some of the parts here. Uh, the kit includes the installation for the reservoir and the um, the, the, the fittings and, and whatnot, but also instructions for the oil metering adapter itself. Uh, you get this backing plate with it, which this backing plate goes in place of the factory windshield washer reservoir. You remove that, and then they give you two bottles, uh, smaller bottles so you can still have your windshield washer uh, reservoir, and then a bigger bottle, which is gonna be filled with your premix, uh, nuts and bolts, here is the oil metering adapter itself. It uh, feels like it's made out of a, a steel. I, can't, I think it's steel. And uh, it's tapped with a barb fitting, which is, which is gonna connect to this hose. And we'll be running to the bigger reservoir here. And like I said, this gets sandwiched in between the, the stock oil metering pump. And there's extended bolts that are included with it. Uh, I use Itamitsu just because this has been these guys have been making a rotary specific premix forever. Uh, back in the day when I had my naturally aspirated FC, I used to run Castrol uh, outboard, super outboard TWS, which was a, a two stroke uh, marine oil. It was pretty cool. It was like this like juicy blue color and people were always confused when I was like at the gas pump putting it into my car, like what is that? But uh, last time I checked, I can't get my hands on it anymore. So. Um, I switched the item two years ago, and I've had good results with it, uh, no issues. So I think they, I think they even ran this in the Mazda 787B race car. So if it was good enough to, to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans, then it's good enough for me. So the first step in the installation is we have to get rid of the stock airbox assembly, including the lower plate, 
and the battery. Now I already have my stock air box removed. If you need a little visual for how to do this, you can look at my ignition coil install for the RX-8 because um, I removed the air box for that install. So let's get to it. So now that we have the battery out of the way, we can gain access to the top here, to the uh, factory oil metering pump right there. Um, we are gonna jack the passenger side up and pop the wheel off so we can get access from inside the wheel well as well. Okay, so the next step is to remove the oil metering pump bolts. There's three of them. And it's kind of be kind of hard to show you guys where this is. So passenger side wheel well. You come in through here. And you can kind of see, there's a bolt right here and right here down at the bottom, which we're gonna get those from through, through the wheel well here. And then the, the, the the front one is over on this side, kind of underneath the water neck, um, which we're gonna get that with an open-ended wrench from the engine bay. But this is the, the oil metering pump right here. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but one bolt, two bolt, three bolt over there. So now the oil metering pump is completely unbolted. There's two electrical connections that we're gonna to have to disconnect from it. So I'm gonna gently ease it out and kind of rest it in the front cross member here. All right, so for this next step, uh, we have to take this coolant line off and take the oil metering lines here and move them to the other side so it's in between uh, this hard line fitting right here and this soft line because the spacer is going to space or the adapter I should say is going to space the oil metering pump out and these got these will route a little bit more cleanly in between here. So have a drip pan ready. Uh, we're going to take this one, one guy off right here and we're going to try to make this as quick of a changeover as possible um, before this thing dumps coal in everywhere. gonna get it right to the end so I'm kind of just going slowly here which I think I'm right about there now you know what I'm gonna pinch this off too just in case but I feel like there's gonna be more oh, uh, coolant that's coming out of the motor as well all right so that's pinched off I'm right at the end I'm gonna get my hand ready on the lines just to pull them through as soon as this comes off
not too bad. A little bit of a mess. Yeah, these oil hoses are like plastic and they're a little, they feel brittle. So just be careful when you're, when you're moving them around. Just wipe off some of the coolant that I spilled. All right guys, so before we dive into installing the actual oil metering adapter itself, there's a couple things I wanna uh, give you that I learned to help uh, your install go a little bit easier. First of all, prepare yourself because this is the hardest part of this install. It's a, it's a very tight working space and it's a pain in the ass to get in there. The oil lines that connect to the adapter are not very uh, confidence inspiring in terms of their structural rigidity. They feel kind of chintzy so you have to be extra careful that you don't snap them or move them in a position that they don't want to be moved in. So a couple tools that you want to make sure that you have on hand are as follows. First, equip yourself with a 3 8 drive uh, socket with several extensions and a swivel, 10 millimeter. The three bolts that hold the adapter in place are 10 millimeter. You'll need this to get the back two bolts through the passenger side wheel well. Uh, I have a 10 millimeter gear wrench here to uh, get the front bolt from the engine bay. And then lastly, uh, you're gonna want some Permatex silicone black or, or gray should do. Uh, just something to kind of help the, the paper gasket seal a little bit better, but also to hold the paper gasket in place while you're trying to line everything up. That is the, probably the most difficult part of this install is getting everything to line up. Uh, you may have to back the adapter out several times and spin the little um, key slot in there so it's, until you get it into the right orientation. Um, but that's just about it. So let's dive into this. All right, next we're gonna install our, our oil needling adapter. Come on, focus. Uh, we're gonna be, we have to catch this notch on the gear for the, uh, or on the notch for the oil metering pump right here. We're gonna be reusing the rubber gasket that, that's in the pump already. So just make sure that it's cleaned off and there's no, there's no junk in there. And we're just gonna get this started on here like so. And now that is seated flush up against there. I'm just going to kind of let that be. So next we're going to install our, our paper gasket onto the uh, adapter. I'm going to use a little bit of black RTV on this to keep this in place and just to kind of create a, a little bit of a better seal. So I'm gonna go all the way around. Should probably videotape that, huh? And again, the gasket itself should should create a, a good enough of a seal. So I'm just, I'm actually, I'm not going super thick with this. I'm just going a nice thin coating that will allow it to stick into place and uh, it'll just help with the sealing in the long, in the long run. Okay, so I'm gonna get this on there. So that's lined up roughly right there. And then I'm gonna take the two bolts for the back. These are the new extended bolts. They're longer than what comes in there to account for the additional space that's gonna be in there now with the adapter. So I'm gonna come in from the back with these and get everything lined up. So this part kind of really sucks. Uh, everything's very tight. You can't put a lot of pressure on the lines and um, you have to get the tooth for the oil metering, oil metering adapter to line up with the tooth that's inside the engine. So uh, it's definitely a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to probably do this as a time lapse because I'm sure I'm going to be struggling with it for a while to get everything to line up correctly. All right, so now that I have everything lined up uh, with the teeth for the pump and the adapter, I'm gonna go underneath from the passenger side footwell. I'll try to get you guys a shot of this and uh, start tightening the bolts.
Lastly, we just have to plug our two electrical connectors back in. All right, next part of this install, we are going to remove the windshield washer reservoir. It looks like there's a couple 10 millimeter bolts holding it in, as well as some tabs for the, for the uh, hose to the washer nozzles. So now we have to remove our windshield washer pump, transferring it from the stock bottle over to the new smaller bottle here. And I believe this just twists and pull to get it out. And be wary of where the, where the nipples are because they can break easily. So here is our gasket here and our pump assembly. I'm simply just gonna push this back into the new one. Actually, I may have to be a little bit, I may have to transfer the gasket first to make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna pull this off, spill some fluid on my bench. I'm going to install that and then just push this in like so. And I'm going to transfer what's left for a washer fluid from this one into this guy hopefully not make a huge mess if you have a lot of fluid in here you may want to drain some of it prior uh, luckily mine was kind of low so I don't have too much to deal with. Oop, look at that, spilling, spilling, spilling. All right, I'll top this off once it's uh, everything's installed in the car. But there's our new miniature washer fluid reservoir. A mess, my nice new bench. Next, we're gonna install the new plate to support the reservoirs um, with the supplied hardware. But before we can do that, we have to remove one plastic washer from the bulkhead before we can put this in place. All right, so there's the reservoirs installed. I snaked my oil feed line down yonder here. They give you extra, so you have to cut it. I'm actually gonna zip tie it off to this coolant hose right here because there's a heat insulator on it. So I'm just gonna tie it right to there and make a shot right into the, into the pump barb right there. So just run it where you need. Make sure you got a little bit of excess and you don't run it too tight, but uh, we're gonna snip it and put it on there. And then before I actually make the attachment onto the barb, I'm going to fill the reservoir and get fluid coming down the line before I attach it. So there's like a somewhat of a prime established.
have it. That is the complete uh, oil metering adapter installation. So as a safety precaution, I did take some of the Itamitsu premix and I dumped it right into the fuel filler neck uh, just in case there's any air in the system. As you saw before, I did allow fluid to come through the hose until it got to the end before I put it onto the barb. But as a precaution, uh, I decided to throw a little premix in there anyways. So that is it for this install. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them below. I'll do my best to help you out with your project, but uh, that's it for this one, guys. Till next time, done.